What do you both eat for lunch and dinner every day? <laughs> I think I'll take this one. <laughs> no, you can take that one. I'm the. Uh, She's the cook. I'm the cook and the food and nutrition educator around here. Lunch. We've evolved. For a while, it was brown rice and vegetables. And now it's more vegetables. We'll mix a variety of different vegetables. I'll steam or saute them with a little water and maybe some uh, tamari soy sauce. And covered, they make their own juices that way. And then we'll have that perhaps with, um, I love a sesame tahini dressing that I make, which is sesame butter with umeboshi plum vinegar and garlic. Steve prefers it when I make it with lemon juice instead. So we'll have the vegetables with that on top. And really, that is very filling. If I use mushrooms, it adds a deep note. If we really need a deep note, which sometimes maybe once a week or off and on, I'll have beans, fresh beans, and we'll have them with our lunch. And that gives the long, deep satisfaction for longer through the day. On occasion, I'll make them I'll make a massaged kale salad and put in some nuts and seeds. Tell them about your creamy walnut dressing. Because in our trial, we wanted people to get the gamma tocopherol form of vitamin E, which is found in the hippocampus center of the brain as a neuroprotective uh, protection of the memory area of the brain, one of the memory areas, the hippocampus. That's the gamma tocopherol form of vitamin E, and that's found in walnuts and pecans, mostly. I also want to um, include the alpha-linolenic acid, which is the omega-3 anti-inflammatory. Uh, and that's rich in walnuts, too. And that's in rich in walnuts, too. So I made a creamy walnut dressing, which is really popular around our house. And that includes, uh, well, the trick is that there are two different flavors of vinegar in it. Who knew that? But a little bit of apple cider vinegar, the walnuts, garlic, Never leave the home without garlic, right? And then um, a little balsamic vinegar, uh, along with a nutritional yeast. And um, sometimes you put flax powder in there too. And flax to powder thicken to thicken bit. the sauce and give yeah. us a little more of Even the more omega-3 omega yeah. alpha-linolenic acid. So that creamy walnut dressing, when I make that, we know we're getting really a lot of neuroprotection, and it's delicious too. And if I put that on the massaged kale salad, it all we can eaten. eat a lot of salad. <laughs> and it's so satisfying. And it's amazing lunch. OK, on to dinner. Occasionally, we'll have um, a nut-based a nut dressing. I have one that I really like in my cookbook, Dementia Prevention Cookbook. Or a sesame gavazio topping. Those are good, yeah. too. I like the five minutes sauce, which is you take an onion and fry it for a while. Uh, kind of a little bit dry fry, and then add peanut butter and water. And it melts together, and oh my gosh, it's so good. You wouldn't believe how good it is. Maybe a little salt and pepper. It's so easy, onions and peanut butter. There you go, a topping for anything you want to put it on, and you're really in a good shape there. So and the vitamin E is precious in those peanuts. And peanuts peanut are butter. 22 milligrams of protein in 100 grams, so they're, you really feel like you're being fed a lot of nice protein And among there. nuts, they're the highest in folate aren't they? Yes, yes. So we'll, and niacin. Yeah, so we'll have a little nut butter there, some onions, and again, vegetables. Uh, sometimes I'll cook grains. Now, I've been exploring the different grains for years. I go through the alphabet. Amaranth, buckwheat. I like the amaranth. It's really satisfying. We've tasty, really been enjoying it. It's nutty and sweet, and it's just wonderful. And then, of course, quinoa, bar, uh, buckwheat, barley. I'm not afraid of gluten. I haven't had problems with it, so I consider it a strong, healthy grain. Can I talk about breakfast? Yes, please. We often have oats for breakfast, and we'll take either uh, rolled oats or oat groats that are already cut a little bit, and we'll soak them overnight instead of cooking them. And that makes them a lot sweeter. And then in the morning, we'll add fruit to it. Now, believe it or not, we live on an avocado farm, and we put avocados in our oats. It sounds funny, but it tastes delicious, and it's creamy and satisfying. We also put all kinds of fruit on our oats. It's sometimes it's hard to find the oats underneath a mountain of fruit. And a lot of it we grow ourselves, like fresh papayas. You can also surprise yourself by having oats with cabbage. Uh, there are all kinds of things you can do as your morning breakfast. 
Now, we used to be somewhat purists and only eat the whole plant foods, but occasionally, since especially we've been working with a clinic and we work with people who shop uh, at regular grocery stores and they do not know what we're talking about with tamari soy sauce or various things, we have been experimenting with what I'll call transition foods and meat analogs, and some of them are excellent. Gardein brand makes some great uh, fishless fillets and chickens, fried chickens and things. So once every now and then we have a good time and we get some of those meat analogs and we we have to test them out for you know to tell people what They're to try. They're not quite right? as healthy as as whole food, of course, but you're a lot healthier than the actual chicken, you know, to eat the, the unchicken. And we found brands over time that people in the clinic, we've said, okay, try this and tell us next month how you like it. And so over time, we've learned the different brands and flavors that people really like. And so you can do that at home too. You can try them out and see they have sausages, they have uh, hickory smoked uh, bologna slices Tofurky, that are Tofurky Star brand. Farms. Morningstar Farms makes all kinds of things that are, are meat analogs. And a lot of people who've had heart attacks or strokes are eating this to reduce their saturated fat. Just one caution, check the package. If the saturated fat is over four grams per serving, then I wouldn't consider eating it. Because once in a while we look at it and the, the serving of this an meat analog, because of the addition of coconut oil usually, is over nine grams. The coconut ones. Yeah. One, uh, the way I see one of my jobs here is to help people love the foods that love them. And so I'm taking my neighbors, my relatives, and I'm saying, try this. And I at least can feel confident that for that one meal, they're reducing their saturated fat, helping to clear their cholesterol from their arteries instead of going the other way. And it takes a while, but what we've seen in the clinic, sometimes we'll see people every month for two years, and they get brighter. It is just so exciting to see people get brighter the more they turn to these foods. And uh, so, but it's a slow transition. I, I believe in evolution more than revolution for food changes. Yeah, it's more permanent usually if people make changes step by step and then they, they have a success with the food like the chickens or the fish fillets and, and then they say, okay, this can work and let's, what's next? What do I try next? How, how about a burger? You know, and we tell them about the black bean burgers. They try those, say, those are fantastic. You know, I don't even need to go to the beef anymore. And so step by step, you can get better without suffering. That's our point, right? That's our point. We we had one friend in the, who we saw, and he said, I tried kale. I hated it. So, you know, no one gave him a recipe. He didn't steam it. He just went like that to the edge. It's very it was sort of bitter and very chewy. So there are some tips and tricks for that. You can steam it. You can massage it till it gets moist and Catherine soft. Catherine has a cookbook, the uh, dementia, dementia prevention, prevention cookbook. cookbook. And she actually kindly gave that to the participants in the trial who were changing their diet. And it also is available on our website, drsteveblake.com. And I also talk about, I have four sections on the rationale for each food change. Why do we want to avoid the dairy products? Why do we want to, you know, what about saturated fats with some charts in there and so forth? So, yeah. 